welcome to the beach house where the sun shines and the sun, S-O-N, shines 24-7. Shine. <laughs> that was cute, wasn't it? I mean, sometimes you have to make yourself get out there in it, but he is always shining. He is always there right in front of us. Well, if you just give him that place in your life, then he can work on all the stuff. Yes. You know, all the things that... You got stuff? You got stuff? Yeah. I got stuff. I got stuff. I have less stuff now than I ever have. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> but have you ever felt hopeless? I have helped. And in fact, when you feel hopeless, that's when stuff starts collecting. Like literal stuff out here and stuff in here collects when you have are hopeless. But when he can help you set your sights on him as your hope and that anchors your mind your will and your emotions i mean i i hope we get to get to some of it today because that's the thing he's been working in me lately is recognizing some hidden hopelessness you may think well I'm, i have faith i'm not hopeless you can have faith and not hope and your faith is ineffective that's mm -hmm. a th don't stop and think about that right now you can think about that later <laughs> But this is going to be a very helpful show, I think. Yes. I wanted to bring up our topic today is hope in Jesus, being anchored in Him. But there's a lot of people walking around hopeless, yeah. a lot. And I was one of them. I mean, I had moments of feeling completely hopeless. So there's 10. We came up with this survey. It was top 10 reasons people lose hope. The first one is feel alone or abandoned. I felt, there, and you don't always know you're feeling it. Mm -hmm. I had a, a abandonment issue and I didn't even know didn't until know. the Lord showed me. Right. But it created behaviors and thoughts and developed habits and lifestyle that was anchored in that in places in my heart that were not anchored in Jesus. And he just showed you that just a few years ago. I mean, it yeah, wasn't sadly. that long ago. <laughs> you like to say it was years ago. One day I'll be able to say that. But, but you didn't know to identify it as part of that abandonment. No, because I thought I've had a great childhood. Here's the thing. You can have a great everything, but we've got a horrible devil who Satan is against us. And he's our enemy. And he's the one that plants evil thoughts that turn into hopelessness. And that's, that's what happened to me. I was three. It wasn't a horrible, I mean, it was, a, it was in an accident in a car wreck, but it wasn't someone mistreating me. Mm -hmm. Satan turned that and the Lord had to show me that, but he can show you. He'll remove the things that cause hopelessness. Right. Okay. Life seems out of control. And so you can't get a handle on everything. Man, I, sometimes you feel like that. I felt like that recently, just so much to do. And as, as mature as you may feel like you are, there are times when everything around you, it just gets to be too much. And so it, you begin to think, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Third one, don't see a purpose mm. for life. Just existing with no purpose. Number four, grieving a loss. Grieving a loss. That's a big deal. And I think... We don't always know how to respond to somebody and help them in the right way when they're grieving a loss. We want to fix it. And sometimes, well, you can't fix people's grief and loss. You just have to let, you just have to help them. You can walk with them into the presence of the Lord so they can find hope. Right. Because there's hope in Him for any situation yeah, and circumstance. That's good. that's good. Fifth one, don't feel they have what they need. Feel hopeless when you don't have what you need. What, like, to Probably money, finances. Probably a lot. Yeah. Money, think. husband, wife, everybody think, oh, I'll have no hope because I don't have a, that's a big deal for people. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, you know, I'm single. I think we've walked through that where we're now, you know, in our 50s and single and had to realize that that's okay. Well, it's not where we expected to be mm -hmm. at our age single but I'm not hopeless it's where we are yeah and being able to go okay it's where I am mm -hmm. set my hope on him and he he fixes it right yeah that's good okay um here's number six 
that they've done something wrong, they have shame and regret, and it plagues them. So oh. I just keep... <laughs> Been there. <laughs> if Been this there. is the first time you've tuned into our show... Go back. YouTube it. <laughs> YouTube it, it. You'll find a lot. You can probably watch almost every show and find something about that on there because the Lord has walked us through... Yeah. So many things, but you know what? He's still showing me stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what? He, you know what I recently saw? Mm. That even though I, I dealt with shame, dealt with the root of it, I, I began to see how it sounds like, what shame sounds like it. And I started to see, oh, that's shame. It has a sound to it, like in a feeling, like your emotions sort of rise up. And and when maybe you're in a, a situation where you're trying to say something and everybody's looking at you like, are you, are you crazy? Or they're not listening or someone shames you about your weight or what you're eating or you're not exercising or you've got a dirty house. And that feeling of not wanting to share, that feeling of not being open to give yourself a be vulnerable that is shame. So even though you may have dealt with a root, sometimes that feeling comes back of I'm not enough. Mm-hmm. And it and it's still that same thing trying to get back in there. I've told you I'm free from shame, but it'll try to creep back in when I have to fill out forms with my children's last names. How many dads? There's shame, you know, that shame tries to come in. It's going, let me in, let me in. Yeah, and I go, oh, I, I know what that is, and I, there is no shame here. I've started to realize that you can start recognizing shame just by, the, by, by what your physical body does, too. How you go. That, mm-hmm. I don't know if you can see that on TV, but <laughs> that pulling back, that desire to pull back from something that you were going to do or excited about something and then thought comes of failure, mm-hmm. that's rooted in shame. We we can talk a lot about shame. Moving on, yeah. because we could just finish we our show on that. We could stay right there. What's number seven? Seven is a biggie. Deeply wounded by someone. So six and seven can go together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we could stop there too, but we probably should... Yeah, moving on. You can fill (laughs) Fill in your own blank because we've all been there. Um, Pulled in the wrong directions, temptations, bad habits, or uh, vices, or voices. (laughs) I didn't have my glasses on, so it could, voices or vices, pulling away. Then you're over here, and maybe you should be over here, but because you're over here, you think you're away. Even people get this sense that I'm away from God. Honey, you're not ever away from God. If you've ever been, if you've ever invited him in, he went with you away. Wherever you went away, he went away with you and he's there. You can even be angry with him and you think he went away. He didn't go away. For me, when I've gone in a wrong direction in my life and I knew I messed up, that hopeless feeling could come instead of just getting forgiveness, getting right back on track, I would wallow in that hopelessness, like I never get it right. Can't you know, I always mess Where's up. Where's the Lord in all this? Right. Where are you, God? Right. But when you're anchored in hope, then when you mess up and you get off on a wrong direction, you just get back up That's and true. keep going. You know, I kind of see this too as I'm very, I love analogies word pictures, but when, when you're anchored and the current's going this way, maybe you get down a wrong stream, but you're anchored upstream at the right place, man, it's just turning around and maybe it's a little work pulling back all the way in, but you're anchored back over here. So you're not going very far. And with the Lord, you know, like you said, when you go the wrong, if, if this is the Lord and this is you, <laughs> Emily does this to me. She said, you mean like if this is this and this is this? <laughs> I'm like, I want to do the analogy. <laughs> this is the Lord. This is you and you're, you're with him and you turn away. That's why the word says that when anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just can't see him. He's just been with you, but he's right here behind you. When you turn to the Lord, there's freedom there 
where the Lord is, is freedom. And that's why you think you came back, but you just turned back around mm -hmm. and he's there. That's good. Yeah. When you said that anchored in hope, I pictured, you know, it's, it's secured by a chain. Just hold the chain <laughs> and pull yourself back to when that. When you get tired, just stop pulling and just sit and hold the chain. Yeah. <laughs> Keep facing him. Because the chain is connected to hope and hope is Jesus. And actually, just to take this analogy one step further, sorry, I have do to it. do it. Go with your analogy. All you have to do is turn around. He's pulling. He's drawing you. He's drawing you in. You just have to turn around and see his face. And you just suck right into that beautiful face of love, Hope, I got this, I've got you, no worries. Just right here, sweetie, keep it right here. Have you ever walked your kids through something fearful and you're like, honey, just look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes right here, I got you. That's all, it's, it is that simple. Mm -hmm. oh, I love him, Yep. I love him. Number nine, we'll get through these, but they're all so good. Hounded by fear. Hounded. Hounded by fear. Has that been ever in your life like that? Well, I don't think I'm a fearful person by nature. Like things don't scare me, but their insecurity is Despair. rooted in fear. Mm -hmm. So I would always say, I'm not a fearful person, but I was a very insecure person and that's fear. And again, it causes no hope when you go with the insecurity instead of being grounded and rooted and anchored in him, mm -hmm. that's then that's so where good. the fear comes. Last one. Uh, when everything around you looks like defeat, looks like you're not going to win, looks like you're defeated, people get hopeless because they, they look at this. I mean, everything we've said, really, the answer is look at Jesus instead, but everything around them is, is saying you're not going to make it. And they, go, they look at that instead of at the hope. Yes. Job 8, 13 says, those who forgot God have no hope. So when he's out of the picture in your life and you're trying to figure this out on your own, then there's no hope. Mm. I mean, you're hopeless. But again, it's being anchored in him. Anch your soul, it says your soul anchored. That's your mind, your will and emotions anchored in him. Hope's gonna come, yeah. but it's in fellowship and union with him. So I think, tell me if you, tell me if you think this is true too. I, I think I would say to you, if any of those things that we read struck a bell, then there, and you don't have to be hopeless in every area. It could just be one, but guess where Satan will attack you? It's in that area. He wants to attack you where you don't have your eyes set on Jesus. I mean, I think recently I went through this, this season where I realized it's way easier for me to believe God for something that's super hard and absolutely undoable for me. When I walked through, uh, Jenny was in a car wreck and, and she, she actually had to, they had to get her back, come back to life. And, and then Lindsay had meningitis and she was dying. That to me, that bubble of hope that I had my eyes so, I knew he wouldn't fail me. I knew he was my hope right in front of my face and walking in faith was really not, it really wasn't hard. But if you want to talk about my, you know, my, my, this needs cleaning or accomplishing this hard, hard task that seems hard in the natural, like I'm going to make your taxes or, or getting, um, uh, overcoming debt or something like that might feel like that's something I have to fix. I had such a hopelessness there, but not over here. I mean, I'd, I'm glad it was not the other way around, but but now God's dealing with me about the natural side of things. I don't have to be all that on that either. I just have to let him be my hope and he'll walk through it with me because um, all of what I was going to ask you to see if you think this is right. If you have hopelessness, you're anchored to something else. Right. So I think you could listen today and begin to just let the Lord prick your thinking when you, and let you recognize what that anchor is. Yeah, what like, am I anchored are, to? What, ask yourself, ask him, what am I anchored to? I mean, what are some of the things that you could be anchored to that would be the wrong thing that well, are, are big in people's lives? You can be going after money, can be something 
you're anchored to that drive for money or a relationship or having the perfect body. You can be anchored in, you know, trying to be successful and that's where your identity comes in success. And we don't realize that, but that's where our identity comes in being anchored to the wrong thing. You know what? I think even a lot of people that are watching our show maybe have, I mean, here we, you may be watching us for the first time, never even heard of our name. So I'm Kelly. This is Jerry. Jerry. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> but some people, Emily goes, are you famous? I'm like, mm, maybe to a group of people. <laughs> There's a group of people. But our dads are preachers. Our moms are preachers. And so there are people who know our name. Not that that matters, but there's people that have listened to our parents like we have. We've watched them teach the word and the word works. So sometimes, though, you can think, well, I'm not hopeless. I'm standing in faith for that. I'm believing for that. But I remember one day I was I was praying and um, the Lord started talking to me. He said, you have fear. And I was like, fear. I don't have fear. And he goes, it's, you have fear about this, about this, about this. And he named like six things. And I'm like, that was my prayer list. But apparently I thought it was my prayer and faith list, but because I wasn't o anchored in my hope, mm -hmm. it was just my fear list. And then he threw one at me. He said, I was afraid about one of my kids. I didn't even have any idea of that. So I was anchored in something that was not good, but right. I thought I was in faith. So right. don't assume, don't assume that you got this because you can feel like you're standing in faith, but you haven't set Jesus as the hope. So in other words, I'm believing for this, but without, if you can't say, I don't know what any of this middle part looks like, but I know that he is my hope. He will see me through. He will get me there. I'm just skipping my, keeping my eyes on him. That's when faith works like that because mm -hmm. faith needs him set in the right place mm -hmm. in your life. I want to read that scripture. The one we're basing the whole show on is Hebrews 6, 19. It says, this hope is like a firm and steady anchor for our souls. And then Hebrews 11, 1, we know that one. Mm -hmm. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. That's good. Powerful scriptures. But what is an anchor? An anchor is a secure system. It's a support system, a stability system. And like Kelly was saying earlier, you know, it's a support. So when you get off that you can be pulled back to what's the firm foundation. Mm -hmm. And that's hope in Jesus. That's it. Hope in him, hope in his word. But it says a steady anchor for our souls, mm -hmm. for our souls. That's heavy. The mind, the will and emotions that you're anchored and you're steadied in your mind because those they will play games with you, yes. tricks with you. They're fickle. Feelings are fickle. They're all over the place. But when you're you're firm and steady and you're anchored in hope, then you're not moved by what's going on around you, what's happening in your life, that hopeless feeling will leave when you're anchored. And hope. you know, we're not talking about, hope. I mean, your sister is the vision board queen. Mm -hmm. Terry Savelle Foy, look her up on, on the online because she's awesome and she'll teach you how to put that vision in front of you and keep that thing. And that gets out in your imagination and God will use that to put that picture of that thing in your heart. But we're not really, we're not talking about, I hope for that thing. I have hope. I have vision. I'm putting it on my vision board. That's, it's good, but it doesn't replace that really doesn't anchor your mind well and your emotions. And sometimes the vision board can be the very thing that you're wrongly anchored to that thing. Mm -hmm. Instead of, this is talking about anchoring to him as the hope of ever having that thing. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I thought, I've done that too many times. I think, oh, I have hope. But just because I saw a picture and kept the picture in my heart, but he was not the hope because he's the one that anchors your mind and says, no, he's, he's got this. Mm -hmm. He's got that picture on my vision board. Mine will 
emotions steady. And that's the area that Satan defeats you in. You need both. But you really, he's the most important ingredient. (laughs) Yes. And there's a difference in hope and wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, you can really wish for something and people think that's what hope is. But there's a hope that can be grounded and anchored in him. Again, when it doesn't look like anything is happening or changing in your life. It's not just a wishful thinking. There's faith mixed with that hope. Faith and hope go hand in hand. You can't have one. You can't really have one without the other. Yes. But you know what I love about um, the Lord is one of the ways that he ministers to us, the Lord Jesus, is when you set him as your hope and you're looking at him, what's he going to be doing? I know in any trouble like this or that I've been looking at him over I'm looking at his face like I'm looking at you right now. And he's saying to me, it's going to be okay." (laughs) You can't hear that if you're not looking at him. He's going, Kelly, he's giving me faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if him saying to me, it's going to be okay," is not the word of God. It's not just the written word that you can see when he's your hope, because you'll hear him say, this is going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Here's what I want you to do first. Here's what I want you to stand on. Here's what I want you to do in a practical nature. And here's what you're going to say. I mean, he will minister those things to your heart. And that's not just a written word, which is awesome. It becomes a rhema. And even the word that you're reading in your Bible, when you're looking at him, it's like you're reading that in his presence. It comes alive as a rhema. Yes. That word means the spoken word. So mm-hmm. if you have the written word and the spoken word, that's how he brings faith when you have hope. Mm-hmm. That's so, so good. So you can't have one without the other. And in Psalm twenty-seven, fourteen, can I read that? Yeah. In the Passion, it says, don't give up. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. This is what we're talking about today. Be brave and courageous and never lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting for he will never disappoint you. I love that. Mm. We love the Passion Bible. (laughs) So whatever it is you're believing God for today, either marriage restoration or finances or a child that's gone away and right now you're just not seeing any hope for change, well, you're going to have to mix your faith with that hope. And again, not a wishful thinking, oh, I hope it gets better. I'm wishing it would get better. But faith sees the end result. Faith is looking out here going, nope, I'm anchored to hope. And my child is coming home. My marriage is going to be restored. Or the finances I need are coming in, in Jesus' name. And you're anchored to that. And you won't waver. You know, when you're anchored to the right thing, then you're not going to drift very far from the truth. You're going to stay anchored right to what Jesus says about that situation in her life. It's a powerful thing. And hopelessness leaves when you're anchored. But you know, I think one of the things that stops people from attacking hopelessness is not knowing it's there. Now, we have heard this our whole lives. Mm -hmm. Our whole lives. I am past my middle 50s. Thank you very much. And, um, but you know what, just recently the Lord showed me a hopelessness that was living inside of me Mm. and it went back to this idea that I I mentioned it was either on this show or another show. I mentioned about if something looks too hard, was that, was that today? (laughs) If something looks too hard, you think I can't do that. And when you think I can't do that, or that's hard. This idea that everything has to be simple or easy is wrong. There are challenging things. And sometimes I was thinking back when I started realizing this to a time when something, I came up on something hard and I backed away on the inside because I thought I can't do that. And hopelessness becomes powerlessness because instead, if I, if, I, if I had a job to tackle, I figured, I realized lately because the Lord was helping me, I was always verbalizing it like this, dear Ian. I was saying, 
if somebody said, hey, let's go to a movie, and I could say, I can't. I have to finish my taxes. I have to clean my house. I have to do whatever. I got to where I was always saying, I have to. And the Lord showed me that the other day. And I began to say, no, I am going to do such and such. Or I choose. I wasn't choosing because I didn't have, I had a powerlessness. Like somebody has to make me do that. I'm like, who's the invisible man making me? Who's the invisible person making me get something done? It's because I didn't have any hope. I don't Mm -hmm. know if that makes sense. But if you're in that situation, you'll know what I'm talking about. It creates a powerlessness to to move forward, but he's our hope to move forward. Yes. So that's my challenge to you today. Recognize, and it may be like me, you might be so deep that you're not recognizing the behavior. Let the Lord show you where you're looking at something else. If, there, if you're having a problem with it in your mind, will, and emotions, you're not anchored. So that's an easy place to recognize, but he's here. He's right with you. He hasn't left you. And you know what? Maybe he's not there with you. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Take my life and do something with it. I set you as my hope in Jesus' name. Now, that's taken care of. We're all in the same family. We're all on the same page. So as we pray, we're praying in faith agreement with you. Jerry Ann's going to pray. And, and you'll see a difference in your life. Amen. I believe you received that word today because we both have been there, dealt with it, and God has been there for us and brought us up to a place of hope in Him. So I'm believing that for you right now in Jesus' name, that your hope be stirred and that you be anchored to the right thing and that your mind, your will, and emotions be anchored to Jesus and that your hope will be lifted in Him, in Jesus' name. I'm believing that for you, friend, that God will show you how much He cares and that there's hope, that you can shine, you can smile again, that the sun's gonna come out and there's hope in your life right now. Thank you. I mean, it can happen like that. If you just open up and go, Lord Jesus, I wanna be anchored to you right now. Amen. So close your eyes and say, Jesus, do it right now. Amen. Enough said. Yeah. Right? That's good. Right? It's that easy. Yes. Hallelujah. That went by really quick. That went by really quick. (laughs) (laughs) But we're, you know what? We're praying for you. We pray for you not just while we're doing this show. Not just while we're we're going. We pray for you while we're going about your day. So that's also how the Lord takes what you're hoping for and you're praying for. And He puts other people in agreement with it so that He can do that thing in your life that you're pressing in. So join us again next week. We'll see you again at the Beach House. Bye-bye.